welcome back to Math with Marty. If I glance up to my right, I see him on the monitor in the studio. Yeah, I look back at the people at home. I never, never get used to this whole monitor question. We are uh, pre, uh, pre-taping a couple of shows at this time uh, uh, to be played back uh, in July, I, late July. I suppose it'll be the, 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 the studio shutdown that they're having throughout the month of July. So we're taping these quite, quite far in advance of that. I'm not quite sure when they're going to be broadcast. Uh, you know, we have the feeling that uh, that the fans are anxiously awaiting brand new math topics. That that they won't put up with reruns of old shows. You know, when when it's something that's close to you, you have an exaggerated sense of of, of your own. Uh, your own importance in the in the grand scheme of things and we we feel that you know it'd be a terrible thing to have six math with marty reruns so we 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 tried to schedule some extra shows in in here taking advantage of little little gaps in the studio time uh so we should only have a couple of reruns uh at most during the summer i'm sure you'll all be uh, real appreciative of this uh, this thing we're doing for you out there um and uh, while we're on the topic of mutual appreciation, I just want to tell you how glad I am when people come up and tell me they enjoy the show because it's a big thing for me. Uh, and uh, a guy, guy came up to me just this afternoon and said, uh, Marty, uh, I like to watch your show, but can't you do some easier topics for us? You know, I know you want to do all these high-level topics, but try and try and chill out just come down to earth give us something we can understand for a change okay now now i hear you okay i i know what you're saying and and i i will try to come down to earth but what i want to do is is explain to you why why it is that i have to be doing all these high level topics why 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 am i always attracted to these uh, these mega topics and uh it's a long story, but you know, I, I spent many, many years in university as a student, and later as as an employee uh, of the university. And uh, you know, I tried to come to grips my whole my whole life with the way things go on, and and what is what is the nature of the whole learning experience what is the purpose of us having these these uh, massive institutions of you know higher education and uh you know you get old and finally you, you your opinions become solidified and, and and you believe and believe their facts and you see this is what i've come to at this this advanced age and you know, I end up doing the show on TV, and why am I doing the show? Okay, why am I really doing the show? A lot of people know that math is fun, especially at the high school level. A lot of us had pretty good high school math teachers, and some of us had outstanding high school math teachers who showed us that math can be a lot of fun. And, uh... I don't know if we have to give all the credit to the teachers. It's something that maybe is born within the human spirit, is the capacity to appreciate math. I bet there's a lot of people that had nothing but awful math teachers right through that still didn't manage to kill the love of mathematics that seems to be, well, seems to reside within, a, a good, I'd say, a good 30% of the population. And I'm not saying that they all took it to a high level and got to be any good at it. But the basic capacity to appreciate it is, is there. Okay. Uh, now, what I noticed happening when I started taking math at university, as opposed to high school, you make the big jump into university. You normally do this at a very impressionable age when you're 18 years old. Okay, when you know when we were 16 and 17 years old, we believed we knew everything that adults had nothing to tell us. And, uh, you know, high school teachers to, were, were a big joke for the most part, okay? Now, then you got into university, and uh, all of a sudden, you're in a different environment. You weren't, you're not at the top anymore. You're right at the bottom. 
and uh, you got professors there who have uh, advanced degrees and are apparently total geniuses in their subject, so much so that you can't even understand what they're even talking about, okay? And you say, what's going on here? And then September, October, middle of October, that you get your first test that you have to write, and you find that uh, university is way harder than high school. You can't, uh, you can't get by, and, and you start groping for answers. What are you going to do? You find that, uh, you find that what you were doing in high school, they tell you, was kid stuff. But university is where you become an adult. You start to learn like an adult, study like an adult, and put aside these childish things that you learned in high school. And one of the things they tell you you got to put aside is the idea that math is fun. In fact, you got to put aside the whole idea that math can be understood. Calculus, first-year calculus, is serious business. It's an important subject. It's, it's something that is required of students to take that aren't even going into any kind of mathematical area. There's about 3,000, 2,500 people in the province of Manitoba every year that got to take first-year calculus. And, uh, and what we do with these people is we hammer them hard so that they know how to execute the important techniques of calculus, differentiation by the product rule, by the quotient rule, parametric differentiation, integration, integration by parts, integration by inverse trigonometric substitution, integration by partial fractions. These are important tools that the student has to learn in order to be able to advance in his career. Okay, or, or, or so it seems to be. There's no room for enjoying this stuff while you're doing this because this is serious, important business. Okay. Now, if you have the kind of natural talent for math that seems to be born into a good 10% of the population, you may find you get through first-year calculus and manage to find some kind of beauty in the subject and enjoy the things you learned despite the fact that that it's like grinding you through a mill to get through it. Uh, but by the time you hit second year and get into more advanced math topics, you know, all pretenses are disposed of here. Second year you get into these topics like, uh, well, let's say second, third year math, you're talking uh, uh, and advanced algebra, topology, set theory, okay, the, the kind of foundations topics, the, the, the basic principles of mathematics, okay. And uh, it's all done in very abstract terms, you know, lemmas and proofs, and you don't know what they're talking about. You know, you sit through class after class and don't know what's going on, but you got to memorize how to execute these proofs, derive these formulas. And why are you doing it? What's the point of it? What's the point of it all? Okay. It seems as though that they figured out that there is important factual knowledge that has to be put into the students in order to certify them with a degree at the end of it. Whether the students understand it or not is totally irrelevant to the process, okay? You got to go through it, pass the exams, and, uh, you know, the worst thing they do is, is they come up with this, uh, this explanation that the reason you're not enjoying this is because that was kid stuff, the things you found in high school when you, t you, you take, uh, you know, trigonometry and you'd understand it and you thought it was beautiful. Well, that's kid stuff. This advanced mathematics is not understood in the same way. The advanced topics are understood by writing out the proofs line by line according to rigorous mathematical techniques where you go from line one, follow the rules and go about 37 lines down and get to the, the bottom of the proof. And if every step along the way was correct, then the conclusion must be correct. And there's no way other than that of understanding the bottom line, okay? That you got to start at the top, and step by step, if all the steps were correct, the bottom line must be correct. And, you know, I couldn't believe that this was really the only way to understand higher math. And, uh, there was, there was one problem 
which we wanted to understand is something we heard about in high school. We never understood how it could be true. And they said, in university, we we're going to learn it. And I signed up for the course where they taught this thing. And uh, throughout September, October, November, we had corollaries and lemmas and subproofs and proofs. And I didn't understand what any of it was going, but the steps were all correct. And then sometime around March, the guy was drawing an on proof line line, and then, therefore, uh, the fifth degree equation is unsolvable. Okay, and there it was all of a sudden, and, and then we went on to the next proof. Wait a minute, what, what, what just happened here? This was the thing I'd been waiting for all my life to understand. Something I heard about when I was in high school that said that you can't solve a fifth degree equation mathematically. Now, this is a fantastic thing. What does it mean? What could it mean? Well, you know you took in high school that you could solve a quadratic equation. I know if, if you remember, x squared plus ax plus b, I should say it differently, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Then they say, what is x? And see if you can't recite the, recite the song along with me in your home as I say it. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. How many of you remembered that? Did a lot of you remember that? Now you, some people are saying, what the hell is he talking about? A lot of people remember that song. What's the purpose of it? <laughs> Does it mean anything to you now? Okay, doesn't mean anything to you now, but you learned a song and, and you remember it. And, uh, you know, some of these, the teachers and professors that put you through this stuff and, and the idea that you'd be able to recite this little poem 20 years after having been through it, that, that, that because of that you've learned mathematics, okay. But this is something you learned. What it means is if I, if I scramble up the numbers, you know, 3x squared take away 5x plus 7 equals 0, then you can solve for x. You can tell me x equals 4.2, and then you put it back in the formula and it all comes out to 0, okay. And it's a wonderful and complicated thing that you've done. And uh, it, it transpires that in the, in the 1500s, Italian mathematicians figured out that you could ask the more complicated question. Instead of just taking a formula which goes up to x squares and x's and things, they can take one, mix in a bunch of stuff with x cubes and x squares and x's, and still unravel it and solve for x. This was a fantastic achievement by mathematicians like Cardano, Tartaglia. And by the end of the 1500s, the same school of Italian mathematicians had carried the science through to the point where they could mix in terms in the fourth power of x and still unravel the equations to solve, solve for x. It's a fantastic thing solving the fourth degree equation. For the next 150 years, 250 years, 1700, 1600, 1700, 200, almost 250 years, mathematicians tried without success to solve the extremely complicated equation where you mix up powers of x to the fifth power, fourth power, cubic power, squared power, first power, and all mixed together with different coefficients. Set it equal to zero and unravel it and try and figure out what x was. No one could solve it. And the greatest minds in mathematics worked on this problem. Newton, Lagrange, Gauss, Euler, they all took their hand in it, made progress. But uh, in the early part of the 1800s, Galois and the French mathematician, mathematician Galois and the Norwegian mathematician Niels Hendrik Abel showed that the fifth degree equation could never be solved in the same way that the simpler equations could be solved. It's a fantastic story in the history of math.